What's going on guys? So we are now on the road in Las Vegas, Nevada, actually heading right outside of Las Vegas, Nevada with a 2019 Ram 3500 Mega Cab Dually four-wheel drive Laramie Longhorn with a maximum tow capacity of 33,000 pounds, which is really insane. These trucks have just come so far in terms of overall capacity. Just 10, 15 years ago, you were roughly at half of that. You know, these, these trucks are monsters now. And the best part about it is, is the amount of excess it gives you in the event you're gonna be towing any trailer that weighs at or under that weight rating. So with me today, I got my good friend, Mr. Truck. What's going on, Kent? Well, hey. Good to see you. Changing lanes out here, just crazy highways by Las Vegas. And back behind me, I got my good friend Jim with Ram. So Jim, can you just uh, take a moment and say what you do with Ram? Hey, I'm the Vice President of Ram Trucks for North America, out here in Las Vegas, and enjoying the first drive of the new uh, Ram Heavy Duties. These trucks are pretty amazing, I gotta admit. I am a big fan of Heavy Duty trucks, and Ram, in my opinion, has nailed it with their new 2019 Heavy Duty truck. Hey, well, no, thanks. To... Not only do we have the most power, but we're doing it with the most confidence in you know, delivering a vehicle that uh, has 1,000 pound feet of torque. It's always incredible to have you know, the, the, uh, the highest uh, amount of power, the highest tow rating, 35,000 pounds, 100, in order to uh, deliver some big numbers. But to do it in a way that is very respectful of the customer and uh, it really makes their, their, uh, their drive a little more, uh, more fun and uh, confident. It's great all the time and attention. Absolutely. And you said it, you hit the nail on the head, confidence. When you are towing, confidence is a big factor. And in my channel, in my videos, I talk about towing often. And what I usually will tell people is there are limitations to what you should tow. Just because a truck has the capability of towing more doesn't mean you personally are going to be comfortable towing that amount of weight. But what I really like about these trucks, especially configuring a Ram all the way up to 35,100 pounds max towing is the fact that most people are going to have a you know fifth wheel travel trailer probably around the 20,000 pound or less range but knowing you have that capability is overkill it's giving you the ability the safety and the confidence to tow a trailer even if it's smaller yeah you know that's that's a really big piece of it you you nailed it because I, I'm a real fan of over trucking just to actually have the customers be able to show up you know at the campsite at the horse show with with a little more fuel in their tank because they've enjoyed the drive it hasn't been stressful you know you're always having to uh, you know pull out fast you know when it's unexpected or stop when it's unexpected it's nice to have a lot of truck uh, there at your beck and call when you need to in those uh, in those uh, dangerous situations because you never know when they're going to pop up absolutely and kent's a good example so kent you've towed several trailers that weigh upwards of thirty thousand pounds and, you know, that's not uncommon for you, right? Yeah, the, uh, we do a lot of that on I-70, and it is, the tunnels off I-70 outside of Denver, west of Denver, it's 11,000 feet, and we're an 8% grade. The thing about uh, towing, I agree with you guys, you want the overbuilt is the way to go because you want that extra level of, uh, of cushion so you don't have the accidents, you don't have failures on the road, and... You know, we, we do 30,000 pounds up to, up to call the Ike Gauntlet, but that TFL truck, uh, we pulled 30,000 pounds many times, and you want a good exhaust brake, you want good brakes, you want all that in grade shifting, uh, very, very effective on those kind of grades, and that makes you, like you say, you makes you feel confident, and you want to be able to, to not worry about so much things. You want to know you can come down a hill, because we come down those big hills, 7% grades at that altitude and you'll see semis come by and burning up their tires. You'll see everybody having problems and it, it, you gotta you gotta know what you're doing and know how to react to things and you know have the heavy duty tires, everything you need to be safe because that is the extreme. And I, you were talking a little bit ago about RVs, difference between a horse trailer and a fifth wheel, you know, the RV style of trailers. And I've noticed that with axles and all that, that on an RV, they go right to the very edge of maximum yep. when they give you your rates. Now, horse traders do the same thing. They'll probably rate an axle right at the max, but I'd like to have a little room in there where I have a little heavier axle than I need to or a little heavier tire than I need to, and that's the way I do things. And 
I've noticed that with U-Haul, they'll give you, you know, they don't give you a spare when you're renting a U-Haul trailer. And the people I've talked to, that's uh, because they, they have uh, a company build their tires just for them and they rate them higher. They, you know, so it's, it's not right on the edge like we're used to the rest of the commercial world. Well, that's kind of the thing. Unless you get a toy hauler, unless you get an equipment type trailer, something that's made to haul, something that's generally heavier than the trailer or at the trailer's weight, axles are the weak point of a lot of trailers. Yeah. Axles, the actually the entire suspension system tends to be the weak point of a lot of trailers, from the shackle mounts to the shackle hangers. And what I like to tell people is if you're getting into RVing, and this probably goes for any type of trailer hauling, whether it's hauling around horse trailers, whether you're getting into lawn care and you're getting a big cargo trailer, or you're buying a gooseneck because you have farm equipment. When you get into hauling a trailer, you now have to keep in mind that the length of your truck has been altered significantly. You are carrying or towing an item behind you that in many cases could be up to twice as long as the vehicle that's towing it. So, confidence. And I know I keep touching on that again. Having towing confidence is incredibly important. Having the feel, like Jim mentioned, when you get to where you're going, not feeling as if you were sweating the whole way there. As if you were just hoping something bad wasn't going to happen or hoping that you could have handled that trailer the way you did. There are so many stressful situations on the road when you're not towing a trailer. Why amplify it when you are towing a trailer? You know? well, I've noticed that with Ram. You know, I've done a lot of cross-country towing with big trailers. And, you know, I, I really liked it when Ram went to Rack and Pinion for a two-wheel drive. I wish we had that back because I love Rack and Pinion. But when I drive cross-country and I'm doing, you know, 600 miles a day... I can drive a Ram all day long, and my hands don't feel tired. I don't, you know, rock and roll back and forth as much. And so there's some magic that they use to make him a really good long hauler. And I've, I've noticed that as a difference between them. Like we're talking about back to tires, I have a, tw a 20, what the heck is it, a 26 foot tilt trailer, and it's a torsion axle. So the axles are a little too far forward. So if I don't have a perfectly low balanced load forward, I can blow those front tires. I've gone from 10 ply to 14 ply and it stopped the problem. Well, I use on my trailers, I actually add that the tire pressure monitoring so I know what the heat is and the pressure, and I love it. And that your Ram's got that now with this truck. You can put that on the trailer, hook it to the to the truck, and probably pulls up on the screen here, doesn't the center stack show you your air pressure in your in your trailer? Yeah, I think you might do it on the gauge cluster. It does it right on the gauge cluster, yeah. Oh, you okay. can do up to six wheels for four trailers. And, uh, you know, so if you've got your RV, you can set it up for your RV at 80 pounds. You've got a horse trailer, set it up for that at 100 pounds. You know, you back and forth, and, and your truck will automatically recognize, you know, what uh, what trailer you've got hooked up. So uh, the trailer pressure tire monitoring is, is huge. And this is oh, these yes. are in-tire sensors, right? Yes. So that's another big thing. There's a lot of questioning concerning related to the difference between an in tire pressure sensor and an outside of the tire sensor and you have to keep in mind that an outside of the tire sensor the type that screws onto your valve stem is going to have a pretty high degree of inaccuracy at times simply because it's exposed to the sun so the temperature is also going to be affected there as well as can you get the actual tire pressure from a static device that's essentially screwed onto the valve stem you know what for me i, I spent a lot of time i'm one of those guys that you know you, you have the trailer gauge the tire uh, pressure gauge in your in your map pocket you know you check it before you get out you check it you know once you've been on the road for an hour you check it when you're going down think of all the time now you save you jump in your truck you take a look okay this you know they're all within a couple of pounds of each other you head down the road you watch them build up with pressure and you keep on going and how many different trailers can you hook them up to there's uh, four different uh, trailers so you can put the tire pressure range that you're looking for for up to four trailers six uh, tires but i've actually blown um tires on rvs and tires on on uh on uh, trailers and uh having the tire pressure monitoring system will help that situation that i've you know i've torn fenders off and i've yep. you know, had to train <laughs> change tires on the side of the road you know i do have my little block right you know ready so i've got the tire change down to about uh 10 minutes you know now with uh, you know, driving up on the uh, uh, on the block but the nice thing is now with the uh, tire pressure system on the new ram 
Um, you don't have to, uh, you know, worry about uh, one of the temperatures getting really high or one of them dropping down low and getting ready to blow on you. You'll be able to see that in advance, and it'll throw you a warning, and uh, you can you can handle that before you get into trouble. Well, Jim, you made a great point, and honestly, tire pressure monitoring and the ability to understand that you are very susceptible to a tire blowout when you're hauling a trailer is a very important topic to talk about, and I talk about it a lot on my channel. Getting rid of the cheap tires that come on trailers as quick as possible. Um, you know, they're good for maybe a couple thousand miles, but even then you're taking a risk. Adding tire pressure monitoring systems if you don't have one. If you don't have a truck capable of coming with the system included, get a system that goes on the truck. They're equally as important and they can detect when there's a rapid air loss. The fact that Ram includes that technology in their truck to give you that extra peace of mind is fantastic. Every safety feature that this truck has, I think is a safety feature that this truck needs. Simply because if it helps mitigate the chance of an accident, of a collision, of something happening that might have otherwise happened had you not had that technology in place, then it could have saved a life. It could save multiple lives. It can simply make you a better, more responsible driver on the road, but not just for you, for the other people that are driving as well. Yeah, that might save my life. That's an important thing is to save Mr. Truck. <laughs> exactly. How can he make good collaborative videos with Big Truck, Big RV if he gets into a car accident? That's true. You always want to look out for your neighbors, and it's something's going to happen. I mean, especially you know, when you drive to the big cities, there's so many chances you're taking if you're not properly equipped and you know, really paying attention to everything that happens. That's, I'm, I'm, I have a CDL, I believe, in at least knowing the information on the test. There's a lot of things on there that truckers know about looking way ahead, watching the signs, doing all that stuff. We're always trying to be safe, and you know, all the information you're getting from this truck is fantastic. It's uh, I love the way things are headed with these bigger trucks. Anyways, guys, we will be on the road here talking a little bit more. And if we come up with a topic that's worth talking about, we'll be back. Hang tight. See you soon.